Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, April 24th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap round one of the 2020 NFL Draft, and I'll give out grades for every pick and other takeaways I've had from the draft. Go over Matt Miller of Bleacher Report's Day 2 Mock Draft, which I did that last year as well, and just give a little preview to see what he thinks, because he's one of the best in the business, and I respect them. Um, previewing episodes three and four of The Last Dance for Sunday night, and another documentary that could potentially be in the works, and previewing Sunday night's episode of a quarantined top 20 live American Idol. All right, we'll start with the draft. Um, it was cool to have sports back. Um, obviously, we had the WNBA draft on Friday last week, and now we have the NFL draft, and it felt like we really um, had something because, obviously, gambling's involved, and there's a lot of big names involved, and it's football, it's Roger Goodell, the whole deal. And um, predictably so, number one, Cincinnati went with Joe Burrow. Um, A plus pick, um, you knew that was going to happen, um, Joe Burrow has a chance to be special, um, after a breakout season at LSU, um, and I think Cincinnati has their guy for a while here. Um, number two, Washington took Chase Young, um, I give that grade an A plus as well, um. He was the best player in the draft. If you get the best player in the draft, you automatically get an A-plus regardless of need or whatever. And that was what Washington would do with Chase Young. They were not trading that pick. They were never trading that pick. And Chase Young was the guy the whole way. And that guy's going to be a sack machine in the NFL. Third, Detroit took Jeff Okuda, the corner from Ohio State. Um... You know, it was a need. They lost uh, Darius Slay in the offseason. A lot of people feel that they should have gone with Derrick Brown, the tackle from Auburn, due to the fact that they literally have no pass rush. But they went best player available, and that was Jeff Okuda. You get an A-plus Detroit. Um, number four, the New York football Giants go with the surprising selection of Andrew Thomas, the offensive tackle from Georgia after many thought it was going to be Jedrick Wills or Tristan Wirfs. I give that pick a B. I just feel like Wirfs and Wills were better. Um, Andrew Thomas, of course, fills a need. He'll be playing left tackle. Maybe they move Nate Solder to right or they cut Nate Solder or um, they put Andrew Thomas at right and keep Nate Solder at left. So their offensive line is better today than... It was 24 hours ago, um, so I give this pick a solid B, and it's funny because Andrew Thomas was actually my number one offensive tackle um, in the fall, and then Wills and Wirfs supplanted him, in my opinion, and um, uh, and that was nothing to do with Thomas, really. It was more to do with that those guys really came onto the scenes, although Thomas does have some flaws, but not a lot of flaws. They're fixable. So, a solid B pick for the New York football Giants. Five, the Miami Dolphins um, proved that those were all smoke screens, and they take Tua Tungavailoa, the quarterback from Alabama. They get an A+. Plus. They got the guy they wanted the whole time. Um, I said yesterday that Miami would be Tua's best fit. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, they got their guy that... Everyone thought that they were going to get a year ago. And they better hope he's healthy. And this is an A-plus pick because they got their guy and the guy they wanted. And I think if he is healthy, he'll be very, very good. The Chargers at 6 go with Justin Herbert, the quarterback from Oregon. I give the pick a B. Um, I think this is... A good situation for Herbert. I said yesterday that Herbert, I felt, had to go to a good situation. I think the Chargers are a good situation. Like, if he got drafted by Miami instead of Tua, I probably would have punished Miami. If he got drafted by Jacksonville, I probably would have punished Jacksonville. 
if he was drafted some other random team that needed a quarterback, like the Raiders, like for long term potential aid or New Orleans, then maybe maybe New Orleans I wouldn't have um punished them that bad, but uh Las Vegas would have been very strange. Um so Chargers gonna be um Herbert may not be great right away, but um, I won't be shocked if he exceeds some expectations because of the talent around him. So the Chargers get a B. The Carolina Panthers at seven. Tough decision on their hands between Derek Brown and Isaiah Simmons. They go with Derek Brown, the defensive tackle out of Auburn. It fills a need on the defensive line, but they needed more edge rush than uh, than tackles. Um, I give the Gary an A minus because Brown is an awesome player, and um, they get the minus because they didn't really need a tackle. If they went with Isaiah Simmons, they'd probably get an A-plus there. But um, not the worst pick in the world by Carolina. Arizona at 8 goes with Isaiah Simmons, the linebacker from Clemson, I give that pick an A. Um, there are people criticizing them for this pick because of the need on the offensive line. But hey, maybe um, they can work out a trade for Trent Williams or they can draft somebody in a later round if they follow them or they trade up in the second round. They Don't forget, they trade away their second round pick in the deal that netted them uh, DeAndre Hopkins. So the Cardinals are going all in on sexy toys this offseason with Simmons in the draft and then in the uh, trade slash free agency with uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Um, we give the pick an A. Simmons was the best player on the board, and they went with them. Jacksonville at 9 went with C.J. Henderson, the cornerback from Florida. I love this kid, fast riser. I had him 11th on my board, so I don't think Jacksonville reached. So they get an A. Um, Arizona is not moving up. Or, I'm sorry, moving back because they wanted Isaiah Simmons. Um, Jacksonville will stay in there because they wanted Henderson. We'll get to the Falcons in a little bit because they tried their asses off to trade up to that um, spot to take um, Henderson to like that 8-9 range. But um, here you go. Jacksonville, I give them an A for that pick. Um, Cleveland at 10 went with Jedrick Wills Jr., the offensive tackle from Alabama. Great prospect falls to them. They get an A-plus. They filled an important need on the offensive line. So their offensive line is miles better than it was a year ago, and it's put up or shut up for Baker Mayfield in Cleveland. Um, 11 with the Jets goes Makai Becton, the offensive tackle from Louisville. Um, I give the pick a B minus. I thought that they had the their choice of wide receiver or offensive tackle. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they loved back then. But my issue with the with them is, and the reason why they got a B minus is because there was a better player in Tristan Wirfs on the board. If they chose him, they would have gotten an A plus. But no, they took the guy that failed the drug test in Mackay Beckton. So they get a B minus. I didn't punish them that much because offensive tackle is an important need for them. So they get a B minus. Um, the Las Vegas Raiders at 12 go with Henry Ruggs III from Alabama, the wideout. They get an A. I thought this was a neat pick. Um, you couldn't go wrong with any of the three, in my opinion. But they would have gotten the plus if it was Jerry Judy or CeeDee Lamb. That's probably what cost them the plus here. Um, so they fill an important need with wide receiver. Um this was the, the classic Al Davis pick, so um, I'm sure he was um, smiling from up above. And um, he would c- come in, help Derek Carr. So not a bad pick from the Raiders. I'm not going to criticize him for passing on a Jerry Judy, although it could come back to bite him. You never know. Um, 13, Tampa Bay from San Francisco. Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle, Iowa. They traded up from 14. They get an A+. Plus. Um It's funny because I predicted on my draft preview show that Tristan Wirfs would fall, but I didn't have him falling this far. I had him falling the 10 and Tampa trading up to get 
Tristan Wirfs thinking that the Jets ha was going to get him at 11. But no, they trade up one spot to get him. Maybe they thought that um, they're fearing that San Francisco was going to take him at 13 or um, Denver at 15. So they moved up to get him. Um, so that was one of my hits of the draft that Tampa would move up for Tristan Wirfs, but not at the right spot. But anyway, much needed protection for Tom Brady. And this pick gets an A+. Plus. San Francisco from Tampa Bay at 14 goes with Javon Kinlaw, the defensive tackle from South Carolina. There's people that were not happy with this selection because they didn't go with the wide receiver. This was a neat pick because they obviously lost the Forrest Buckner in the trade, and they replaced him with the pick they got, and they get an A. So um, A is my grade because that was a neat pick. Um... I think Ken Law is going to be really good. Um, I think he is the second best defensive tackle in the draft behind Derek Brown. Um, so very, very solid by San Francisco. Um, 15, Denver Broncos. Jerry Judy, wide receiver, Alabama. They get an A+. Plus. Best receiver in the draft falls to them at 15. I'm surprised that Oakland or Las Vegas went with Ruggs instead of Judy because I thought Judy screamed Raiders. But John Elway... You saw the clip of him before Goodell made the announcement of the pick. Like, he was just sit chilling and saying, yeah, I got the best receiver in the draft. So, good job on John Elway. He didn't have to move up to get him. Um, so, you have Judy, you have Ruggs. Or, I'm sorry, um, I'm thinking of Alabama here, saying Ruggs instead of Cortland Sutton. And with Drew Locke, I think that that could be one of the more improved offenses in the league next season. 16 Atlanta goes with A.J. Terrell, the cornerback from Clemson. I think that this was a reach. I gave it a C+. Plus. Um, Terrell, um, I saw some people mocked Terrell to Atlanta, and I thought he'd go between, like, 19 and second round was his range. So I give this pick a C+. Plus. There are better corners on the board, such as um, two that are still on the board, and... Kristen Fulton and um, Trayvon Diggs. I had um, Terrell as my cornerback five. And cornerback three and cornerback four on my board are still on the board. And we're still on the board for the Falcons to take. If they took one of those guys, I probably would have given them maybe a B or a B plus, depending on which one they took. But they reach for Terrell and get a C plus. The Dallas Cowboys get one of the biggest deals of the first round. C.D. Lamb, wide receiver, Oklahoma. No one had C.D. Lamb to Dallas. They get an A+. This is a situation where Dallas um, said, screw the needs. We, we're going with best player available. This is exception to the rule for that because... CeeDee Lamb was clearly the best player available. I thought he could have gone as high as 9 to Jacksonville. I thought his floor was 15 to Denver. But no. And it's funny because I said yesterday on the show that CeeDee Lamb over 12.5 was plus 200. It might have been like plus 205. And I said that, that was valuable. And I just never thought of it because... I thought that the Jets were going to take him at 11. But no, um, Jerry Jones gets a big steal. You know Jerry Jones loves selecting sexy toys in the draft. And they took one here with Jerry Judy, or I'm sorry, with C.D. Lamb. And they get an A+. And I'm sure Dak Prescott, I know he's dealing with a tragic loss of his brother right now. But once that's all over with, he, I'm sure, will be very happy with um, the selection of C.D. Lamb. He has yet another weapon in that offense. It's Lamb, Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott, um, Michael Gallup, Blake Jarwin. That is a really solid group of players for Dak Prescott to be thrown to. 18, the Miami Dolphins, Austin Jackson, offensive tackle, USC. I give this grade a B-. minus. Um, I thought this was a reach. Um... 
They could have gone with Xavier McKinney here, who's shockingly still on the board. Um, they could have traded down like they did from 26. Um, they had some options here. Uh, maybe they could have traded up to um, uh, 12 and stole Tristan Wirfs. Um, so I give this grade a B minus. I think Austin Jackson has a chance to be very good. But I just think that at 18, it's a reach. 19, the Las Vegas Raiders go with Damon Ornette, the cornerback of Ohio State. This was the worst pick of the first round easily. This gets a D. There were better cornerbacks on the board, such as Kristen Fulton and Trayvon Diggs. And no, Oakland reaches and gets Damon Ornette. And that makes sense to why um, Atlanta probably reached for A.J. Terrell because they know that the Vegas Raiders wanted him and then Vegas had to reach for Arnett who was number 58 on my big board as, as a day two grade cornerback 10. This is a deep cornerback class. Um, yeah, Terrell is my CB5. Jalen Johnson... Um, would have been a reach, too, because all the talk was the Minnesota loved. And we'll get the Minnesota in a little while. Um, but, yeah, there were better players on the board. Patrick Queen would have been fine at that spot. Um, even McKinney or Grant Delpit would have been fine. Obviously, Kristen Fulton and uh, Trayvon Diggs were still on the board for them. But, no, they go with Damon Arnett. So that pick gets a D. The Jacksonville Jaguars at pick number 20 go with Kalevon Chason, the edge rusher from LSU. I give this pick an A. Um, they have a um, potential need there because they're going to trade Yannick and Gonkwe eventually. So um, why not replace them? Um, and... Obviously, uh, Lamb fell to Dallas, and if Lamb didn't fall to Dallas, let's say Atlanta takes him at 16, that would have been a great pick for Atlanta. If they had Lamb, Ridley, and obviously Julio Jones, that would have been a loaded offense as well. And then Dallas probably would have taken Kalevon Chase on at 17 if Atlanta went with CeeDee Lamb, or if San Francisco went with CeeDee Lamb. And... Maybe Jacksonville goes elsewhere, but they get a good player falling into their lap here, so I give them an A. And now the question is, um, when did they trade in Gakwe? And even they came out and said that they want to keep him. Um, next up at pick 21, Philadelphia went with Jalen Rager, the wideout from TCU. I give this pick a C because, yeah, they filled the need, but... There were better players on the board. Brandon Ayuk was still on the board. Denzel Mims was still on the board. T. Higgins and Justin Jefferson, and that is obviously the guy all the Eagles fans were expecting and hoping for, but no, they go with Jalen Rager, my number nine wideout on the board, so they get a C. Minnesota goes with Justin Jefferson, the wideout from LSU. They get an A because he fills a need. And he was my number five receiver. And although I had Higgins four, um, Jefferson and Higgins, it's close. So they go with Jefferson here, and they get an A, and they replace Stephon Diggs with somebody who is very good. The Chargers trade up to 23 from New England and take Kenneth Murray, the linebacker from... Oklahoma, um, I give this pick a B. Um, there are better players or linebackers on the board. Patrick Queen on the board. Jordan Brooks was on the board. Zach Bond was on the board. Kenneth Murray's not bad, but he's just not my favorite linebacker. They get a B for that pick. He'll help them. Um, 24, the Saints, they go with Cesar Ruiz, the interior offensive lineman from Michigan. I give this pick a B plus. This was... One of the more surprising picks of the first round. The Saints did not have a need on the offensive line. But they choose to go in that direction. Um, I wonder if 
they're going to trade somebody that's on their offensive line. They have two, um, they have a really good tackle in um, Ryan Ramchak. Andres Pete is not what the Saints thought he was, although they paid him. But, um, yeah, um, I give them the benefit of the doubt. He's a good player. He'll help them, so I give that pick a B plus. Green Bay from Miami. Or I'm, yeah, Miami. Um, no, wait, no, I skipped one. I'm sorry. Um, San Francisco from Minnesota takes Brandon Ayuk, the wideout from Arizona State. I give the pick an A minus. Um, fills a need. Um, he'll help Jimmy Garoppolo in that offense. Um, they get a minus because there's a couple other better wide receivers on the board, in my opinion. Brandon Ayuk was, I believe, my seventh ranked wide receiver. Yes, seventh. Behind Denzel Mims, who I consider about close to even. And then, obviously, T. Higgins. So, they get an A-. minus. So, I mean, that's a pretty good pick. Um, Green Bay from Miami at 26 goes with Jordan Love, the quarterback from Utah State. Stunning pick, in my opinion. I know there are rumors about this, but I didn't buy it. I thought it was a smoke screen, but it turned out to be real. I just pick a C minus. Um, I thought about giving it a D, but it gets a C minus because um, Jordan Love, I think, does have some potential, and maybe he'll be in the Aaron Rodgers situation from a couple of years ago. Or not a couple of years ago. I should say over a decade ago. And obviously I think um, Rodgers um, is somebody that is going to go to the Hall of Fame. I do not think that about Jordan Love. But who knows. Maybe um, Rodgers gets injured. Like he's gotten injured a lot throughout the last couple of seasons. And then Love gets some playing time. And maybe... Um, he shows some promise or something, and maybe they trade him, or who knows. Um, but I give that pick a C- minus because it sort of benefited the doubt as well. Seattle at 27 takes Jordan Brooks, the linebacker from Texas Tech. That's an A pick for me. Um, Seattle really didn't need a linebacker, but um, Jordan Brooks is somebody that um, was one of the better players on the board. Um if Seattle took Patrick Queen, maybe I would have given them an A+, plus, but they go with the second-best linebacker left on the board in Jordan Brooks. I give them an A. He's gotten comp to Bobby Wagner, which that's probably what Seattle heard, and maybe they took him because of that. Um, Baltimore, 28, took Patrick Queen, the linebacker from LSU. They get an A+, plus, best player on the board, or one of the best players on the board. They snag at 28 with their biggest need. I thought that um, there was a chance that they'd pick him and trade up for him, but they didn't do that. It was the Chargers that moved up to that spot and took Kenneth Murray ahead of the Saints. So Baltimore gets an A-plus pick for a plus for their pick, and he will certainly help them. Tennessee at 29 goes with Isaiah Wilson, the tackle from Georgia. I give this pick a B-. minus. There were better linemen on the board, such as... Urza Cleveland and Josh Jones. But this was an important need because Jack Conklin left in free agency. So I give them a B minus. 30 Miami Dolphins go with Noah Ngankwe, the corner from Auburn. I give that pick a C minus. Um, there are obviously a couple better corners on the board. Um, Ngankwe or Igbignoni, I had as my seventh cornerback. Jalen Johnson was still on the board. Um, and a couple other guys were still on the board as well, such as two guys that I thought were first-rounders and Trayvon Diggs and Grant Del or I'm sorry, Kristen Fulton. Or they could have gone safety with Grant Delpit or... Um, Xavier McKinney, but they didn't. So Miami takes a corner opposite Byron Jones, but they could have gotten a better player. 
at that position, so I give them a C minus. Minnesota takes Jeff Gladney from TCU. Um, he was my eighth ranked corner. He was right there with um, Noah Igbengoe. But I gave the Vikings a better grade at the C plus due to the fact that they absolutely needed a corner. They needed a corner more than Miami did. They probably needed a corner more than anybody. But if they took Kristen Fulton or Trayvon Diggs, I would have given them an A. But they go with my eighth ranked corner. It was him and um Iguangoe neck and neck for seven and eight. But and Gwingoni was my 7, Gladney was my 8, so Minnesota gets a C-plus for that pick. 32, Kansas City goes with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, the running back from LSU. Um, this pick surprised some folks. There was um, a prop bet of 5-1 um, to one for him to be the first running back off the board after it was 12-1 to one a week ago. I talked about it. On the preview draft podcast yesterday that Clyde Edwards Hilaire had value at first running back picked. I should have went with it, but I didn't. Casey got to be plus for the pick. I kinda like the idea of him in that offense. I said yesterday that he'd be a good fit on the Chiefs. So they snagged him here at the end of the first round. Um B plus because I felt that they had to address needs on their defense more important than their offense. That's the only reason why they get a B plus. If it was DeAndre Swift, they probably would have given it the same grade. Um, a couple other takeaways from the draft. Um, Todd McShay couldn't be there with ESPN due to the fact that he tested positive for the coronavirus. Get well soon, Todd McShay. Um, was not the same without you last night. Um, I thought Mel Kuyper did a good job analyzing. The best player left on his board, if I'm not mistaken, is Xavier McKinney. The best player left on my board is Kristen Fulton and one spot ahead of Chris or Xavier McKinney. And then Grant Delp at 18, Tiggins was 19. So players 16 through 19 on my big board are still there. And player 22 with Trayvon Diggs is still there as well. So five first-round talent players are still there. So... If you do the math, 32 minus 5, um, that, or my bad, um, minus 10, because I had, or 26. So 26 first round worthy players, and there's five of them left. So 21 first round worthy players went, and then 32 minus 21 is 11. So 11 teams took um, round two players. Nobody took round three players, which is... Uh, Good. The closest thing, though, was obviously the Raiders with um, the cornerback, um, Damon Arnett. Um, now I want to go over Matt Miller's Day 2 mock draft. Um, I did this last year on the show, and I'm going to do it again and see um, what he's thinking and what he's hearing and see whether I like it or not. All right. Um so, round two, Bengals at 32, Zach Bond, linebacker, Wisconsin. That would be a great pick for Cincinnati. That is a huge need there. The Colts via Washington, Jalen Hurts, quarterback, Oklahoma. That would be a bad pick, in my opinion, because they need some help on the defensive side of the ball, and they could use a wide receiver. The Lions go with Ross Blacklock of TCU. That would be solid for them, um... Giants at 36 go with the uh, interior lineman Lloyd Cushenberry of LSU. That wouldn't be bad to, um, to fix their offensive line, but I think they should go defense with that pick. But I personally think they should trade down tonight if they have a chance so you can get potentially a third-round pick. Patriots get the Chargers pick. Yater Grossmatos of Penn State, that wouldn't be bad. I had him as a round two picks, so whomever takes him tonight will get a good grade depending on um, where he goes and who has the need. Panthers go with Matt Hennessy of Temple. Did Hennessy play for Matt Rule at Temple? I don't think so, because Rule was at Baylor. Um, 
I think it was 16, 17, 18, and 19. So, um, yeah, Matt Hennessy, I don't think, uh, or no, 17, 18, 19. Maybe Matt Hennessy's freshman year is coached by Rule. So that would be a fun subplot if uh, Matt Hennessy was drafted by Carolina. Dolphins, DeAndre Swift, that'd be good. Texans via Arizona, Denzel Mims. I think Denzel Mims to the Panthers is very realistic. Um, Mims going here would be um, pretty funny because, obviously, um, he's a downgrade from DeAndre Hopkins, although he's good. Browns, Antoine Winfield Jr. from Minnesota, that'd be solid. Jaguars at 42, go T. Higgins from Clemson, that'd be great. Bears from the Raiders at 43. Kristen Fulton of LSU. That would be a steal. 44. Colts. Josh Jones from Houston. That would be a steal. Buccaneers at 45. Xavier McKinney of Bama. Would not be floored if one of those talented players falls to the box. It's just their luck. Broncos at 46. H.A. Epineza of Iowa. That would be pretty good, alongside uh, Jarrell Casey on that pass rush. Falcons, J.K. Dobbins of Ohio State. He would replace Devontae Freeman. Jets, Jalen Johnson of Utah. That would be a great pick. Steelers, Jacob Eason of Washington. Steelers should wait until day three to take a quarterback. Um, The Steelers have other needs to address, such as wide receiver and some needs on the defensive side of the ball as well. Bears, K.J. Hamler, Penn State, that'd be really good. Cowboys, Marlon Davidson, Auburn, that would be solid. Rams, Josh Yushi of Michigan, that'd be good. Replacing uh, Corey Littleton. Eagles, Malik Harrison of Ohio State, not bad. Bills, go with Kyle Duggar, who I'm not a fan of because um, he's from a small school and... I just don't believe in guys from small schools unless they play competitively well against highly competition like the Carson Wentz's of the world. Ravens, Jeremy Chin of Southern Illinois. I think he's one of the more overrated players in the draft. Same reason, small school. Need to see it, although people like him a lot. But I just need to see it to believe it. Um, Dolphins, Michael Pittman Jr. of USC. Rams, Jonathan Taylor of Wisconsin, that would replace Todd Gurley. Vikings, Justin Madubali of Texas A&M. Seahawks, Robert Hunt of UL Lafayette. Ravens, Cam Akers, Florida State. Titans, Trayvon Diggs, Alabama, that would be a steal of the Titans getting him late in the second round, like they did with A.J. Brown last year. Packers, Chase Claypool, Notre Dame, that would be a solid pick. Chiefs, Bryce Hall, Virginia, that'd be really good. That'd be fitting because he'd be reunited with um, Juan Thornhill. Seahawks, Darrell Taylor of Tennessee. Third round. Bengals, Colkmet, Notre Dame. That'd be a good pick. They um, could use a tight end. Redskins, Lavishka Chignold of Colorado. That'd be a good pick. Lions, Grant Delpit of LSU. Holy crap, that would be a steal for them. Jets via the Giants. Donovan Peoples-Jones of Michigan. Panthers, Cameron Dantzler of Mississippi State. Dolphins, Terrell Lewis of Alabama. Patriots, Jordan Elliott of Missouri. Cardinals, Ben Barch of St. John's. Jaguars, Zach Moss of Utah. Browns, Logan Wilson of Wyoming. Colts, Raekwon Davis of Alabama, Buccaneers, Navelle Gallimore of Oklahoma, Broncos, Lucas Niang of TCU, Falcons, James Lynch of Baylor, Jets, Curtis Weaver of Boise State, that'd be a good pick, Raiders, Lakai Fotu of Utah, Raiders again, Josh Simpson of Clemson, Cowboys, A.J. Green of Oklahoma State, the corner, so there's your Byron Jones replacement. Um, Broncos, Willie Gay Jr. of Mississippi State, Rams, Bradley Anne of Utah, Lions, Lynn Bowden of Kentucky, Bills, Darrington Evans of Appalachian State, Patriots, Van Jefferson of Florida, Saints, 
Troy Dye of Oregon. Vikings, Ezra Cleveland of Boise State. That would be a huge steal if the Vikings got Ezra Cleveland in the third round. Texans, Davian Taylor of Colorado. Raiders, Julian Aquara of Notre Dame. That would be a steal. Ravens, Alton Robinson of Syracuse. Titans, Devin Duvernay of Texas. Packers, of Fernie Jennings of Alabama. Broncos, Ashton Davis of Cal. That would be a solid pick. Chiefs, Harrison Bryant of FAU. Browns, Kenny Robinson of the XFL. Patriots, Adam Trotman of Dayton. Giants, Jacob Phillips of LSU. Patriots, Terrell Burgess of Utah. Seahawks, Gabriel Davis of UCF. Steelers, A.J. Dillon of Boston College. So there's your James Conner replacement potentially. Eagles, Stanford Samuels III of FSU. Rams, Damian Lewis of LSU, the guard. Vikings, Brandon Jones of Texas. And Ravens with Colin Johnson of Texas, the wide receiver. So there's your day two mock draft by Bleacher Report's own Mike Miller. Okie dokie. Um, there's a documentary in the works that I want to talk about for a couple minutes, and that is Kobe's final season. It was reported today that that was filmed. Hmm. That's very interesting. Um... I thought that um, the Jordan documentary would be like the leading thing to have potential documentaries for LeBron James down the road. Um, you knew that there's probably going to be one for Kobe Bryant down the road, but I wouldn't have thought that it would get leaked three months after his passing and one week after, or three months after his passing and one week after the uh, premiere of The Last Dance, but here we are. Obviously, Kobe's last season, the Lakers were bad. They were like 16 and 66 or something terrible like that. Um, his last game was obviously one of the more memorable moments of that season, and it was the same day as um, the... Um, Warriors going for 72 wins, and one game was on ESPN, and the other game was on ESPN too. And the Warrior game ended first, so everybody got to see uh, Kobe hit the game-winning shot for the Lakers in his final game when he um, put up 60 points in his last game, or something crazy like that. I think it was 60 that... Kobe put up, or was it 50? It was some absurd number he put up in his last game. That would probably be in this Kobe documentary for sure. Um, speaking of the last dance season, or, I'm sorry, episodes 3 and 4 will be on Sunday night, 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock on ESPN. They're re-airing the first two episodes um, on uh, at 7 and 8. Um, and then 9 o'clock of season 3. It's about um, uh, Dennis Rodman and the early months of the 97-98 season. And then um, episode 4 is Phil Jackson continuing to steer and Unique and singular collection of talent to another title. And obviously in one of these episodes, I believe it's the third one, you'll see um, uh, the Bad Boys Pistons team involved, like Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars and all those guys from the late 80s Pistons team that got in Jordan's way initially, and then Jordan eventually uh, um, beat those guys. So um, they're obviously a part of this documentary this weekend. And last but not least, I want to talk about American Idol for Sunday night. Um, they are doing 
a quarantine virtual top 20 performances and America's going to vote for the top 10. And it's all live. You'll see Elena Jester, Arthur Gunn, Sinia Elise, Dwayne Cocker Jr., Dylan James, Faith Bensel, Francisco Martin, Franklin Boone, Grace Lear, and obviously Grace was the last person picked because um, it was between her and um, the other girl, blanking on her name, um, Johnny West, Joven Webb, Julia Gargano, Just Sam, Kimmy Gabriella, Lauren Spencer Smith, Louis Knight, Michaela Phillips, Nick Mariko, Olivia Exemes, and Sophia Wackerman. That is a great group of 20. Um, I think Sophia Wackerman's the most talented singer of the group. Just Sam, I think, has a shot as well. I really am a fan of Lewis Knight as well. Um, Dwayne Cocker Jr. is really good. Arthur Gunn's talented. Dylan James is very good. There's a lot of good people in this group. And um, I'm obviously going to talk about the episode on Monday's show and what everybody's saying. I wonder if they're going to go... Um, girls and then boys, but it's a two-hour show, so I wonder if they're going to squeeze all 20 performances in there, and then they're going to have America vote, and you'll have your results on next week's show, I guess, unless they do um, a two-parter, and then, um, meaning part one this week, part two next week, and then um, they have a Monday show for the votes, so um, I wonder how they're going to do this, and we'll recap it all on Monday's show, as well as the rest of the draft, although I'm going to do a separate draft podcast, recapping the entire draft, or draft and giving um, teams grades on their drafts and whatnot. So I hope you guys have a great, great weekend, everyone.